In this video, we're answering the question, what is mechanical engineering? And we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Check the description for the free 1% Engineer Kit, access to our Discord server with over 700 engineers, the Instagram page, and lots of other things below. We've been wanting to make this video for a while because Zach Starr, a friend of ours, has a good video related to this about what the major is like what the courses are like in university to choose mechanical engineering. But there is not very good updated content on what is mechanical engineering once you get a job, what it's actually like to be a professional in a mechanical engineering role. So in this video, we're gonna break down three different very popular avenues for mechanical engineers once they get into the professional sector. And because I get so many questions about aerospace engineering, automotive engineering, and product engineering, physical product engineering that is, this video is gonna break down what it's like to actually be an engineer in one of these sectors. So if you're an engineer, you're not exactly sure which avenues to go, this is a perfect video for you because you will see the patterns throughout these three roles along with the divergent niches that you can go down to develop deeper expertise within your engineering journey so you can get that absolute dream job. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video, guys. What is mechanical engineering? Let's begin with a definition, not just the Wikipedia definition. Let's see what MIT engineering has to say about this field. Mechanical engineering is a versatile and interdisciplinary field that includes everything from nano engineering at the smallest scales down to one one thousandth the size of a human hair to the biggest systems, such as those for large scale manufacturing or water desalination. MIT is pointing out that you can work in any field that you like because we still live in a world dominated by physical things and every single piece and component that makes up something else in the world is designed, improved, tested, and created by a mechanical engineer. Anything that combines physics, mathematics, principles, and material science, that is mechanical engineering. Let's discuss a brief history, guys. Mechanical engineering began with the six simple machines. The wedge, the wheel, the inclined plane were designed thousands of years ago during prehistoric times. The next application for mechanical engineering was for water powering machines, things like water mills and water wheels. And then engineers started to design things later on like furnaces and sundials, more complicated machines to help human society. Archimedes passed away in year 212 BC. He's considered the greatest mathematician of ancient history. To me, he's the first Iron Man mechanical engineer. I know, I know, Tony Stark was an electrical engineer, whatever. Elon Musk isn't even an engineer. He has a physics degree. Shh, quiet down. That's blasphemy. Even back then, Archimedes anticipated modern calculus and analysis to derive and prove a series of theorems, including area of a circle, surface area and volume of a sphere, area of an ellipse, area under a parabola, area of a spiral, things like this more than 2,000 years ago. We were doing these things. This was the beginning of engineering. And now, today, you can work with ridiculous projects, which is why for mechanical engineering professional profile number one, we've chosen a mechanical engineer for the Starlink project for SpaceX. The SpaceX Starlink project is an ambitious initiative using thousands of satellites, low orbit satellites that will provide high quality internet to people all around the planet. So it's a very cool project. It's a blend of an aerospace-ish with mechanical engineering twist, which is why this is chosen. You can't always get into aerospace engineering without a master's degree with it, but you sometimes can. For example, this role just requires a bachelor's degree. Let's look at the responsibilities first. This engineer will design and certify mechanical systems that meet customers customer and SpaceX requirements. They may utilize the full spectrum of the design, analysis, tests, and manufacturing tools to create efficient structures and components. I love this one. They're required to take ownership of product delivery timelines through conception, design, assembly, and launch. This is what's unique about SpaceX, guys. This is why I love the company. If I were to go back to school and do all this, I would go into aerospace engineering. That's why I always use these cool applications as examples, but taking ownership of a whole product through that life cycle is something really cool. This is why SpaceX is such a unique company and those engineers work so hard so much and get paid so much money because they have a crazy culture. Taking ownership means that this is your project and this is what you're responsible for and you own this. And so if this gets messed up, it's just on you. That's what ownership of a project means. In corporate America, we don't have enough of this anymore. People just point their fingers like, oh, I just did my job. I don't know. And finally, they may develop test plans for parts through development, qualification, and acceptance testing. Develop test plans. That's key. You need a bachelor's degree in engineering discipline. They keep that vague. So an electrical engineer could probably also get this job. Experience with CAD and FEA, software packages, and at least a year of experience with mechanical and electromechanical design and analysis. 
an internship experience would qualify, they say. Now let's get into the preferred skills. Preferring a master's degree, who cares about that? Three plus years of professional experience in mechanical design and analysis. Two plus years of hands-on project experience with complex mechanical systems, preferably as a lead engineer. It also requires a solid understanding and application of GD and T. Demonstrated understanding of structural analysis and failure modes of complex mechanical systems. And that you're self-motivated with strong organizational and written oral skills. <laughs> and I love this one, just like I said about the SpaceX culture, additional requirements, ability to work long hours and weekends as necessary, not if necessary, as necessary, because I'm sure they do it all the time. So what I want to point out here is you can make yourself more eligible for roles like this. You don't necessarily need these things. It says preferred skills, the master's degree and the three years and the two years. These are things that if you show a portfolio or if you show an internship that had these, or if you show research experience where you worked on these things, this can suffice as enough experience to get you in the door. Or maybe if you only have something like one year of experience, these other things that you can show and validate your skills or give yourself more credibility, there's ways to do this. And as we go into another academic year this fall, depending on where you are in the world, it may not be as easy to get that internship, to get that volunteer research. And there's no better way than to get started with the sponsor of this video. Thank you to Thangs.com. Thangs.com is a platform for engineers, designers, and 3D CAD enthusiasts. Thangs is like GitHub for 3D models because designers can collaborate and share models with one another. They have awesome features within the platform, like their geometric search. You can upload a model you've created and Thangs.com will identify similar files that you may be searching for. Have a very complex model? No problem. Thangs will identify clusters of components or even individual project files that you may want to continue your design. There are over 1 million index models in their database today and they're adding new ones all the time. As mentioned, collaboration is a breeze. You can create project teams to share your ideas, iterate on designs, and keep track of model versions and revisions. This is usually a nightmare in engineering, so thank you, Thangs, for figuring this out. You can even house a portfolio of your work right on Thangs, so when you're looking for internships and jobs, you can direct them to your work. This creates an opportunity for you to preview the portfolios of experienced designers and engineers, so you can find ideas and inspiration through their work. You can comment on their models, follow their future releases, and interact with other people interested in the same designs. These are great community features. Things.com is entirely free, so head over and check it out for sure, guys. One of the through lines in this video is that you're going to need mechanical design skills, modeling experience, and most likely a way to prove that and build a portfolio. It's not the easiest thing to do these days. Internships, research assignments, and even things like entry-level positions may be harder to achieve achieve for you. So you might have to show that extra year, that extra experience, that extra little boost in your marketability as an engineer who's looking for the next opportunity. All right, guys, with that SpaceX Starlink role complete and information about where you can get started with your portfolio, let's get into the mechanical engineering job profile number two, which is a hardware engineer for General Motors. This is in the automotive engineering lane, which I get so many questions on, and I think it's probably the most popular arena within mechanical engineering for students and young professionals. So that's why we chose that. This is also an entry level position that we're inspecting. I like their messaging as well, which is to achieve our vision of a world with zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. We need people to join us who are passionate about creating safer, better, and more sustainable ways for people to get around. I chose GM here because it's one of the largest car manufacturers in America, market cap of 42 billion. Check out this cool job description. Mechanical engineers are the bedrock of GM. We were able to build the company we are today with innovation, teamwork, and dedication our mechanical engineers brought to our vehicles. But now we are looking to push it even further. This rotational opportunity is an early career development initiative for new hires designed to build foundational skills, to gain greater exposure, and to better understand our business. This role aims to develop and strengthen the future of our organization through rotational development, networking, and annual development opportunities. Sounds like a great opportunity at GM because they rotate you through. You get four six-month assignments, so it's a two-year commitment up front. But I really like this model because they let you explore multiple arenas within the automotive engineering process and the hardware engineering process so that you can figure out what you really like. The primary responsibilities, let's see if there's some crossover between GM and SpaceX, is to design, develop, 
develop and test physical components and systems for our existing and upcoming vehicles. Weird, there's your portfolio need right there, guys. Lead and direct the design, analysis, and testing of mechanical hardware components. Act as primary accountable contact for any issues and concerns during the product life cycle. Again, ownership, act as the primary accountable contact. I love that. This is ownership, leadership, this is great. Ensure work gets done in both a team setting and individually, you will develop, improve, and integrate the product through testing of design and feature modifications. You may also demonstrate product safety, integrity, and quality through testing. Other qualifications, you should be currently pursuing a bachelor's in mechanical engineering, mechatronics, biomedical engineering, or materials engineering, private 3.0, whatever. Here's another one. Demonstrate knowledge and application of mechanical engineering principles, system dynamics, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, all your standard core mechanical engineering courses. Efficient use of software programs, NX, which is Siemens software format, Team Center, and MATLAB Simulink. There's a lot of desired skills that are mostly software related or experience related. For example, having an internship is attractive. Demonstrate leadership through extracurricular activities. This is one that I talk about all the time, guys. Emerging partnership and collaboration skills to learn from and share knowledge. That's a communication, evidence of strong character with integrity, honesty, accountability. This is a character thing. Written and verbal communication, emerging partnership and teamwork skills, high level of integrity. Most of these are character driven, communication driven, or leadership driven. So I'm not going to read through all of those. But again, well, one of the through lines is design, develop, and test physical components. So getting in there in your 3D CAD software, 3D modeling software, and building those skills, creating things, showing what you can do is big. All right. With that being said, we're getting into mechanical engineering role number three, which is a mechanical design engineer one for Honeywell. For those of you who don't know, Honeywell is a global company with over 10,000 employees. They make all types of products. They need all types of mechanical engineers to design them, which is why we're using this company. Well, let's hear from Honeywell's messaging. Be a part of a team that applies its expertise and knowledge to technical projects, finding innovative, cost-effective means to improve products techniques, procedures, and technologies. You will support the design and development of new ideas and solutions for new product development, as well as supporting current products modification and improvements based on service needs and market strategy. Very cool. I really like it when companies, they have a mantra or mission or tagline or something simple that you can remember. Nike, just do it. BMW, ultimate driving machine. Honeywell didn't have that, but even a company like GM had it. That's really interesting to me. Key responsibilities, technical documentation. Mechanical parts design and support, ooh, drawing and 3D modeling, weird. Component and system analysis, engineering support, and technical reporting. You must have a bachelor's degree in engineering. Again, it seems like they would take mechatronics or electrical engineering or even computer hardware engineering because again, a lot of engineering degrees can cross over between disciplines. What they value, industrial design talent, AutoCAD, ability to work independently, willingness to learn new technologies, and open, honest, and team-oriented personality eagerness to get involved in hands-on work. A lot of people ask me about this. How do I work hands-on? Well, you got to find job descriptions like this. They exist. Creativity, some experience developing new products or sustaining existing product ranges. Weird. Why don't you go design your own products, guys? Some experience in highly regulated or safety critical domains and a mechanical engineering degree. No kidding. So as you can see here, guys, creating the ability to have the skills to jump into a software ecosystem, to be the lead for your senior design project and actually have more experience, more drawings to show. And then once you sharpen your teeth a little bit, you can take your skills and then create a digital portfolio pre, during, or post COVID, what? Ever. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an explanation about what mechanical engineering actually is, what you'd be doing on the job, what you'd be doing for your career, what you'd be doing outside of university because so many engineers, they get a degree, they get an internship or they don't get any internships and they show up in year three, year four, or the scariest thing is you've already graduated, you get there on the job and it's like, oh wow, I don't like this. This isn't what I expected. So this video can help you figure out a little bit more of what it's like to actually be a mechanical engineer so you don't get blindsided. You can switch majors, you can switch to electrical, civil, industrial, whatever, or even just start to accumulate experience in a different avenue. So I wanted to expose you guys to a couple different actual engineering roles in the world right now. These are three job openings on Glassdoor that I found that are here for October 2020. What kind of engineer do you guys want to be? Comment below. Who wants to hear more tips and suggestions for platforms out there, especially if they're free? Comment below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thanks again for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell 
and subscribe. Join our Discord where you can learn more about our Friday night live streams and even ask me and our team career questions. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.